What up, Spin Squad? Spinning at you with another video from one of my most popular series, 10 Plus Tricks. This video is gonna be on my favorite trick, the cork. For those of you that don't know, this 10 Plus Trick series is me essentially just showing you 10 different tricks and giving a bit of context behind each variation, whether it's mostly style, if there's some use for it, and just anything that I would take note of in case you want to use it for your movement. But anyway, the very first court variation, which is the standard J-step single court. If that didn't look floaty, it's because, again, I'm wearing weights, and if it did look floaty, then sick. As I say in all my other videos, whether it be a tutorial or 10 plus tricks, you should always do the progressions. Always learn the easier tricks and work your way up. Work, work your way up. This next variation is essentially the second kind of cork that you want to learn after you've gone to standard cork, which is a cork hyper. So the only difference with a regular cork and a cork hyper is which leg you land on. You're going to do your cork and you're going to land on your kicking leg, okay? In my opinion, the practicality behind doing a cork hyper is that it sets you up in just a different way. For example, you can go into a cartwheel and do another trick after a cork hyper. Another thing to keep in mind is that you need to have a little bit more height so that you can do the extra spin to land on the other foot versus a regular cork. So as you start getting more comfortable with your corks, they're starting to get higher, they're starting to get floatier, they're starting to feel easy, that's when you can start adding in shapes. This one is the cork D-leg. To break it down, a cork D-leg is just doing a single cork, but then as soon as you kick, you go into a D-leg motion. Well, a D-leg shape, not motion. A D-leg is this. The next cork variation that adds in a shape is about just as difficult, just in a different way. This is the cork rodeo. In my opinion, this variation is physically easier than doing a cork D-leg because the cork D-leg, that shape, like slows down your twist a bit. But it is harder air awareness wise because you can't just keep your arms in and you have to actively kind of reach and think of where your hand is gonna go. So if you're really comfy with the corks, they're really floaty, but you want a little bit of a challenge without too much risk, try cork rodeo. So now at this point, if you've gotten all those variations, you're pretty comfy with it, you wanna go to the next level. Now it's time to start doing double cork timers or at least what I consider a timer for a double cork, which is a cork gyro. A gyro is when you do the spin after the flip. Since there's already a spin in a cork, I consider a cork gyro just doing a single cork, but instead of looking for the ground and reaching your feet there, after you do the first spin, you kind of just hold that position and keep going for as long as you can. When you can get about three quarters of the second spin, that's when I feel like you know you have enough power for a double cork. Okay, it's getting pretty hot and we're getting into the double variations, so I'm taking off the kilo gear weights. Oh my gosh, so much better, so much lighter. So if you guys didn't guess, after you've done court gyros, you're like, okay, this is feeling pretty good. Then you just straighten out for that double court. That was my first dub of the day. Let me warm up my double air awareness, okay? Not much to say about a double cork. It's a cork with one extra spin. Adds a lot more difficulty to the trick as is adding a spin to any trick. But yeah, it's one of my favorite versions. I will say not many people do this trick from J-Step just because it's a physically hard setup. Most people do it from either TDR, which is a touchdown rise. Or from Scoot. Play a little game. How many times is my hat gonna fall off? Comment below. And also let me rephrase, not many free runners. Did I say free runners or did I say flippers? Anyway, not many free runners just do double cork from J-Step. Trickers on the other hand are on another level. They're doing like J-Step trouble corks. I don't even get it. <laughs> now, this next trick is kind of what I consider the harder version of a cork gyro, which is a cork skull snapper. And since we're doing double twist variations, we're going trigger mode. <sighs> Thank you. 
what you want to do for a skull snapper is essentially tuck on the first cork, although my tuck isn't that tight, and then once you feel like you finish the second cork, straighten out to do the second spin. This, in my opinion, is one of the easiest double cork variations and double pull variations because you can do so much of the flip in the first spin because you're tucked. Because as we know, when we tuck, we flip faster. When we straighten, we spin faster. The next two variations are essentially just upgraded versions of tricks that we already covered, which is the rodeo cork and the cork delay. What we're gonna be doing is just adding a spin to both of those tricks. So this is cork delay twist. I cannot do that from J step. <laughs> That's actually the cleanest cork D-leg twist I've ever done. <laughs> so the way that this trick works is essentially you gotta learn cork D-leg, get cork D-leg super, super pretty, then get cork gyro and skull snapper super pretty, okay? Cause skull snapper, when you, str when you go from tuck to straightening out, that second spin, that straightening out technique is what you're gonna use for the D-leg twist. twist I've ever done. And as I said, the next variation is a cork rodeo twist. I'm not gonna lie, I've never tried this, but it should be fine. I was essentially just making my list of 10 corks to show you, and I was like, oh, I've never done rodeo, so here we are. <laughs> okay, we're getting there. I'm getting dizzy. Oh. I'm just tapping my shin, I'm not actually grabbing. Let's try to get a cleaner one. Clutch the landing, but that grab was there. As you can tell, I think the most valuable spinning skill you will learn is how to gyro, how to spin out of your flip. Because that's how you're gonna do timers and how you're gonna execute so many double twist variations. But anyway, on to the next version of a cork. So this next variation isn't specifically a different kind of cork, but it is just another road of corks, another path of corks that you can focus on, which is swinging out of them. Once you have regular single corks, comfy, your landing super floaty, that's when you wanna start practicing the eagle motion for swinging. The eagle motion is when you see the ground, once you're about to finish the cork, you reach toward the ground with your landing foot and you essentially get your arms in position to do another swinging type move, whether that be cheat gainer, cork, whatever you want. Pro tip, if you wanna work up to cork swing through cork, do a cork swing through, kick up, and then just do a really cheated cheat gainer, or a cheat gainer if you can. And if you do the progressions, you work your way up, you have a strong base, then you can get some really high skill stuff, like cork swing through double cork, which is our last trick. Actually, this is 11 tricks. I've already shown you 10. Very happy with how my swings have gone. Okay, so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please comment below that you enjoyed it so I can make more of them. Also, as I said, this is my favorite trick. I have so many other variations. I have 20 plus variations. So if you'd like more variations of the cork, comment below and I'll make that. Or comment below another trick that you'd like me to do a 10 plus tricks on and I will go ahead and do that. Anyway, please remember to like, subscribe and ring that notification bell button to become part of the Spin Squad today. And as always, keep on spinning. Whoop.